Hello, my dear students, and welcome again to a new chapter. It's actually a small chapter, or maybe we can consider it as an extended chapter to our previous DCDC converter chapter. In the previous chapter, we have to demonstrate together the concept of DCDC conversion related to either stepping up or what we call boosting the voltage or stopping down or bucking the voltage. Or maybe we have this buck boost conversion just can be tuned to be a, 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 um, a buck or a boost. And the key parameter or the key input determining the behavior of your DC-DC converter to be a buck or a boost or a buck boost is what we call the duty cycle. A duty cycle is a signal generated from what we call a pulse width modulator, where the duty cycle is defined as the ratio for the high time or the rising time of your signal over the overall period. And as you can expect, the controlling of the duty cycle is the main parameter in a DC-DC converter to control what we can call the operating point of your solar cell. And in order to reach a maximum point of operation, again, a maximum point of operation is related to the point at which the power is maximum, you have to adjust an appropriate duty cycle for that. That's why a maximum power point tracking algorithm is embedded to control the operation of a DC-DC converter. And that's why I consider it as an extended lecture for a DC-DC converter, because by the end of the day, you will find your maximum power point tracker embedded somehow in your DC-DC converter. Let's now start proceeding with that. Okay, so I think you can now see my presentation slides and let's start the process. So as I just mentioned, it's a process of controlling the operating point of your voltage. So by changing the duty cycle, you simply change the operating point, which reflects on the voltage you are working at. And your target will be to reach a point at which a maximum power occurs. I think we already consider this maximum power point when we study two chapters ago, the IV characteristics of a source. But the problem is what we call the harsh conditions of a solar cell. Solar cells are operating under variable environmental conditions. These variable environmental conditions can be either in terms of a solar irradiance. So by changing the solar irradiance, your IV curve and correspondingly your PV curve change, or it can be also in terms of temperature. So by working at different temperatures, your IVK, IV curve change, and again, correspondingly, your PV curve change. And with this change, the point where maximum power is extracted is changed accordingly. According to that, you have to have what we can call an algorithm to track the changes in the IV curve or the PV curve to keep working all the time on the maximum point or the maximum power point or the point at which the power is maximum. And this is basically the function of a maximum power point tracker to keep tracking the variation in the IV curve or the PV curve so that your system extracts the maximum power all the time. To have this, or to, 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 to implement this, we can divide this into three types of algorithms. The first, or the most basic one, is what we can call the offline methods, where no input data is needed, as you, we will see later on. And the second, where we can call the online methods, we have very two famous methods, which are the perturbed observed, the PNO, and the incremental conductance, and other uh, advanced methods or hybrid methods. 
it is important here to highlight that. What we are going to do now in this very short lecture is just demonstrating the main idea of maximum power point trackers. However, these algorithms have in the backstage a lot of flowcharts and codings that could be studied whenever you are in the area of interest of knowing more about that. So we are going just to give a very shallow highlight on the basic principle, how these algorithms work. So the first and the most fundamental or the most easy way to that is just keeping a certain voltage as constant. So you fix a certain voltage, which we call it the reference or whatever, that's why we call it a constant voltage method. And then once your ID curve change, you're still working at the same as the same concept, which is basically represent a constant duty cycle entering to your DC DC converter. Of course, this is not an accurate method, method at all, because simply when your IV curve changes. Your maximum point, your maximum power point or VVMP changes, which you can easily monitor here if you can see here the variation. For example, you can see easily that the point at which maximum power occur in terms of voltage change with changing of the condition. Of course, similarly here. So this constant voltage method is not an accurate method by all means, but it's most uh selling point or its most advantage is it's a very simple and easy must. You are just going to enter or to have a constant clock to your DC-DC converter, making considering that your output voltage will be constant all the time. That means that you will get the same voltage all the time. A second method is what we call an open circuit voltage method. If you remember, my dear students, I told you that empirically we can have a relation linking the open circuit voltage to the VMP point. And this is usually in terms of 0.8 something. So usually the, uh, the, the VMP represents 80 something percent of the V open circuit. So by considering this K factor for a certain solar cell, you can just grab the open circuit voltage and then multiply by this factor and adjust your operating point on that. So herein your reference will be open circuit voltage, which is an easy voltage to be detected by a solar cell. And you will re refer to this V open circuit in order to calculate the VMP. Of course, again, this is not so accurate method because as you know, you can have for example, when we study together the series resistance and the shunt resistance effect or the partial shading effects, and sometimes you can have a constant open circuit voltage. However, your IV curve changes. We, we, we have seen together a, a, a lot of examples for that. So your IV curve change, but you still have the V open circuit. So in this case, you will still have the VMP. However, your VMP change. So that's why this is not a good way. So for example, let me uh, try to, 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 to show you something here. So for example, I can have a curve like that. So this black curve is typically have the same V open circuit as the red curve with totally different field factor and totally different maximum power point. So using this open circuit algorithm, you will simply get the same VMP, however, in this case, you have a totally different VMP. That's why this is not an accurate method anymore and should be, uh, and will, will result with some sort of inaccuracy. Another method, which may be a bit accurate, which is short circuit current method, again, using the same concept that usually the IMP is 90 something percent of the I short circuit. So you can, uh, guess the IMP using the I short circuit. And I short circuit is relatively more accurate than the open circuit because as we already started that I short circuit is directly proportional to the irradiance. So at least for irradiance, 
this will play a good uh, approximation. Maybe for, for current is not so good, uh, for, sorry, for temperature variation is not so good. So it's still, this is a, a bit better way of measuring. However, it's still it's an offline method. So whenever you have any instantaneous changes, this will not be highly recognized by your algorithm because you are considering an offline uh, version of a maximum power point back. So this is simply the three main or the three most famous um, uh, techniques for the offline uh, maximum power point factors. However, we can have on the other hand what's called an online method. From the word online, you can get that here we have some sort of interruption to the system. So you, you catch or you acquire some data, and based on this data, you, you, you will go make a decision. This is the main concept of the, uh, the, the, the online method. Or in other words, it's a, a feedbacking circuit. So you, you get the voltage and, and current, and based on this voltage and current, you take a decision and so on. So you have some sort of a feedback. So in the perturbant observe, which is the most famous algorithm with maximum power point trackers, not only on, on solar cells, by the way, maybe even for wind uh, turbines as well, it's very famous. The concept is very easy. The concept is that we are going to measure two points. So we have, for example, V1 and I1, and we have V2 and I2. And simply, if V2 is greater than V1, and I2 is greater than I1, that's mean you are in the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's not I, it's P, sorry, I'm sorry. So you are you, you take I, but you calculate V. So you are uh, comparing V1 and V2 with P1 and P2. And of course, P1 is V1 times I1, and P2 is v, uh, V2 times I2. So if P, uh, obviously V2 is greater than V1 because you increment, you increase. But if uh, P2 is greater than P1, that means you are in the rising slope. So you have to increment again to reach the maximum point. However, if V2 is greater than V1, but B2 is smaller than the P1, that means that you already passed the maximum point and you are now in that decreasing the slope and you have to decrement to return back to the maximum point. And the maximum point is defined as a point where there is no variation. We have a flat band. So this is this is simply the concept of a P and O. Of course, if you go to literature, you will find hundreds of papers considering P and O, and you can also find a lot of algorithms and modified algorithms for P and O as well. And of course, I think if you visit MathWorks in MathLab, you will find a uh, a tool uh, or a, a block for the P and O in the in the in the toolbox, and it is very famous method in capturing the maximum point. Of course, herein, we add some complexity to the system because you simply make a feedback signal of getting voltage and current and returning back and so on, which also adds some sort of a response time because simply this process will not occur in a zero time. It needs some time to be implemented. So you add complexity, you add some sort of delay, but you gain accuracy. And this is a logical trade-off between accuracy and the complexity. Another famous method is what's called the incremental conductance. It works nearly in the same way, but with considering the slope, dp over t dv. So if the slope is positive, then you are in the positive uh, direction. In the, if the slope is negative, you are in the negative direction, which is most likely very close to the uh, P and O. Maybe if you go to implementation, you will capture the difference because there is a difference and a maximum point is a point at which the slope is equal to zero, which is simply the turning point in a mathematics, as you know. So this is how incremental conductance work. As I mentioned, this is a very shallow introduction for that. You, you can go to see more details whenever you are interested to see more about incremental conductance and, and perturbant observe. And there is another, a lot of other metaheuristic methods, for example, you can visit something like Gray Wolf methods, for example, and all these metaheuristics um, models related to the maximum power point tracker whenever you are interested for that. But with the upgrading of the technology, it's not only these metaheuristic um, algorithms that are used, but now artificial intelligence play an, an important role in that. So, for example, you can find something with fuzzy logic 
you can find some sort of maximum power contractors using fuzzy logic. You can find maximum power contractors with artificial neural networks. You can find maximum power contractor with machine learning models. And this is, we can call it a smart techniques or artificial intelligence based techniques or something like that. A lot of techniques are demonstrated now in literature toward that. But here you have to take care that you are increasing the complexity and increasing the response time of your of your uh, network. So you have to take care of that. Is it possible to go through that or not? Because this can vary from one condition to another. For example, whenever you are implementing your system in a relatively stable conditions with, with no extreme harsh variation in environmental condition, it doesn't mean it does mean it does make sense to add complexity to your system because simply your maximum point will variation will be very limited. Alternatively, if we, if you are considering an extreme weather with an extreme variations, then complexity will play an, an added value to your system because you have a very huge variation and you need a continuous monitoring. So this is may differ related to the condition related to the size of the system, related to a lot of parameters. Finally, as I just mentioned in the beginning of this lecture, is a very short lecture, DC, DC, uh, maximum power point tractors nowadays are not a separated block. So usually in the system, you will not find a block called the maximum power point tractor. It's something embedded in your DC, DC converter. So by the end of the day, your DC, DC converter will back boost your voltage based on your need, will uh, tune your operation at a maximum point, uh, maximum power point using maximum power point driving rules will also act as a regulator. We already discussed that in the previous lecture to ensure a uh, regulated flat DC power. And over and above, it is also acting as a charge controller. Maybe we will consider this two lectures from now when we consider storage systems and we can understand why we need a charge controller and what are the uh, benefits of having a charge controller in a system. But all these functions will be implemented by the end of the day in you know, one block called the DC DC controller. That's all my dear students. Thank you for concentrating on this very short lecture and see you later on in next lecture, inshallah.